It is morning. Howard is on his way to school. He is wearing the new top hat. He sees his friend John. Oh, cool hat, says John. Where did you get it? I found it yesterday, says Howard. It was totally squashed. I brought it home for my dad to fix. He is good, says John. It looks nice. Thanks, Howard replies. Check this out. He reaches into the head. Wow, your arm is gone. Nice trick, John exclaims. Yes, but I wanted to show you something else. Howard tries to get a grip of Bing. He pulls his arm out of the head. Bing, where are you? He yells. We have to get to class, says John. Wait, you must see this. Howard shakes the head. But nothing happens. Well, I got to go, says John. Howard sighs. He puts on the hat and follows John. Everybody stares at Howard's hat when he enters the classroom. Sit down and find your books, says their teacher. He is called Mr. Finch. All children obey Mr. Finch. He can be strict. Mr. Finch writes some words on the blackboard and turns around. He is about to say something when he notices Howard. Howard, could you come over here, please, says Mr. Finch softly. Howard comes over. Mr. Finch takes Howard's head. He is not soft anymore. You know that you are not supposed to wear a hat to school. It is going straight to the principal's office. Then we'll just have to see if you ever get it back. Bing has been asleep in the head. He yawns and takes a look around for something to eat. Bing is always hungry. But there is no food. Well, he thinks, maybe there's some pizza from yesterday. I'll have to find Howard and ask him. But when he gets out of the head, he freezes. He is not in Howard's room anymore. This is a big room with tables and bookcases. And there is an open door to a small kitchen. Bing sees food. Yummy, he thinks. He is just about to eat when a bell rings. It is recess. Mr. Finch and the other teachers are having lunch. But they stop and stare when they enter the teacher's lounge. A hat is levitating in the middle of the room, and food and papers are flying around. What happened to our food? a teacher exclaims. A flying hat, says another teacher and points. It is an evil spirit, says Mr. Finch. We must scare it away. They get a window opened in a hurry. A teacher tries to push the hat toward the window with a broom. The hat is pushed out of the window. It flies away. And stay away, evil spirit, Mr. Finch yells. Bing flies above the heads of many playing children outside. I just need to find Howard again. Then everything will be all right. Several children try to catch the hat, but they can't. Bing flies it very well. School is done for the day. Howard and John are going home. It's a real shame I didn't get my hat back, says Howard. And I don't know where Bing has gone. You might be coming down with a bit of naughtiness, says John. I've never heard of bunnies living in hats. Suddenly, the hat lands on Howard's head. Where did it come from? says John. I don't know, says Howard. But I think Bing is controlling it. Howard takes off the head. Are you in there, Bing? he yells. John shakes his head. You are not, he says. I hear Bing. Howard puts the head down on the ground. 
It shakes and jumps around as if it was filled with springs. It smokes and sends out sparks. And then Bing appears. Here I am, the great Bing, he says loudly and waves his arms in the air. John stands gawking. Bing points at John. Watch this. Don't be afraid, Howard whispers. Sit down and enjoy the show. Bing pulls things out of the head, one by one. Stars, flowers, a couple of pigeons and a small mouse. John applauds and shouts, More! More! Bing ends with a grand finale. Then he bows. I need something to eat before I can do more magic. All right, let's go home and see if Mum has baked a cake, says Howard. It will go faster if we fly in the head, says Bing. But we can't fit inside that little head, says Howard. Just you wait and see, says Bing. They are sucked into the head. There are buttons and little lights. And there are windows to see outside. Come here, Bing points to a chair. Do you want to control the head? The boys are eager to try. The head zooms between trees and over rooftops. Both Howard and John try controlling it. You have done this before, says Bing impressed. No, but we have played a lot of games, John laughs. John gets off at his house. Howard flies the rest of the way home. They land in the garden. That was fun, he says. Howard steps in the front door. He is wearing the head. Dad is looking at his cell phone. The school just called. They can't find your head and offered to buy you a new one. But you have it, I see. Yeah, it seems to find its way back to me, says Howard with a smile. I've baked cookies, says Mom. Sit down and have a cup of tea. Could I eat the cookies in my room? Howard asks. Mom nods. Howard grabs five cookies and runs up the stairs. He is really hungry lately, says Mom. This was a fun day, says Bing. He has come out of the head and is sitting in Howard's room eating Mom's cookies. I have an awesome game you have to try, says Howard and turns on his games console. They play a couple of hours and have fun. I better do my homework now, says Howard. Then I'll have a nap till dinner time, says Bing. Howard opens his school bag and finds a book. He smiles. It is nice to have good friends, he thinks, and opens the book. 